This video is gonna show you how to unlock everything in Jet Set Radio Future. I've done a video like this before, but there's new information and more details that need to be included to make things a bit easier. So we're gonna go back through the entire game and update things as needed. I'll be as concise as I can to streamline the information, but if you get stuck, I'm gonna upload the entire playthrough to a second channel so you can watch the raw gameplay or just laugh at how bad I really am at this game. This video will also include timestamps if you need to jump around for specific info, pun intended. Anyway, let's get started. In total, Jet Set Radio Future has 24 playable characters. During the regular playthrough, you'll be able to play as 12 of these characters. You start with Yo-Yo, Gum, and Gorn, and will eventually unlock Beat, Combo, Garum, and Clutch during the story. Optional characters to get are Rith in Rokaku Dai Heights and Boogie in Kibo Gauka Hill when you visit those levels. And if you revisit the bottom point of the sewage facility, the Rokaku Expo Stadium, or Highway Zero during Chapter 7 of the story, you can race and unlock unlock Cube, Jazz, and Soda, respectively. The other characters are unlocked through skill challenges called Test Runs. Access through Roboy in the garage after you beat the game, the Test Run mode is designed to test what you've learned during the game in practically every level you've already explored. Each level from the game has three Test Runs to complete, but there's actually four different modes in total. There's a Jet Graffiti and Jet Tech run for every level, which is basically to show just how good you are at spraying graffiti and racking up points. The third mode of a level will depend on how it's laid out. If it's more of an infinite loop or a racetrack, you'll be doing Jet Dash, completing the loop as fast as possible. If it's more of a giant sandbox to explore, you'll be rushing around collecting flags to complete a Jet Flag run. Each level's test runs have score requirements you'll need to match or beat to trigger the unlockable character. These fluctuate between pedal, motor, engine, turbo, nitro, and jet rank. You're aiming for jet rank on every test run to unlock characters, but the other rankings are good so that you'll know how you're doing skill-wise and where you might need to improve. Another thing to note is the stats of your character as well. If you're having trouble with a certain test run, you may need to switch to another character that has better stats for that test run. If it's Jet Dash, having better acceleration and cornering is ideal. If you're having trouble with a Jet Graffiti run, you're definitely gonna want a character with a high spray or graffiti stat. As we go through each level in detail, I'll include the jet ranking scores for that level based on the game data collected by the JSRF reverse engineering community. Completing this set of challenges for a level will unlock a corresponding character for the level, usually tied to some sort of story event or a relation to the area. But how do you go about unlocking each character exactly? When you're exploring the levels of Jet Set Radio Future, you'll come across this mysterious cassette tape, which just so happens to be called a mystery tape. During the regular story, you're putting up your own graffiti or challenging rival gangs to battle. But if you grab the mystery tape in a level, you unlock street challenges for that level. These usually range from doing a certain amount of tricks, racking up points and combos, with a harder challenge reserved as the last thing to do for that level. Each challenge will also unlock a corresponding graffiti soul, which you've probably seen floating around during your playthrough. The link between the street challenges and the test runs is this. You need to collect all the graffiti souls in a level, both spawned, and from street challenges to unlock the test runs. The mystery tape spawns as soon as you enter a level, which begs the question, could you get the tape, beat the challenges, collect the graffiti souls, and clear the test runs to unlock new characters during the story? Unfortunately, no. Unless you're able to modify your game file somehow, there's no way to do the test runs before you beat the final boss. You could always complete the challenges for a level before the story ends so that you don't have to go back in the post game and can just do the test runs right away. It's really up to you. Anyway, to summarize that massive amount of information, to unlock a character tied to a level, you need to get the level's mystery tape and complete the street challenges, collect all the graffiti souls that are already there or spawned from the street challenges, beat the story, and complete all the test runs for the level on jet rank. Now that you understand the process, let's get into these secret characters and how to find them. The first level we're also used to seeing, Dogenzaka Hill, is a great way to start your journey into Tokyo, and as you move your way up and down its inclines, you'll find the mystery tape just before you get to meet B. The only weird challenge here is the Avenue Long Grind, since sometimes it may not trigger the Graffiti Soul spawn. For me personally, the easiest way I've done it is by using the set of rails on the left side when you're going downhill. You just run into the first rail, jump and grind, making sure not to fall. The rails on the other side of the hill are also really good for Jet Tech since they give lots of points, especially if you're using Y grinding instead of X grinding. You'll get a much better combo multiplier 
Although the timing is a bit tricky, you'll get used to it though as you practice and you can use the Y button for more air trick points too. Dogenzaka Hill is also a giant loop, so you'll be doing jet dash as well. Just give it some practice, check the times, you'll be fine. It's the first level, it's not that bad. Beating all the test runs for Dokenzaka Hill unlocks the Doom Riders. The iconic Shibuya Terminal is also home to one of the most infamous street challenges in the game. The mystery tape isn't too hard to find, as you'll be going up to this platform when you encounter Poison Jam during the story. The 13 platform challenge sucks big time. I hate doing it every time, and I've played this game a lot. Basically, you need to jump and land on 13 of the bus terminal roof platforms and not fall down. You'll want to start from the side platforms closer to the garage pathway near the run you did to unlock combo because they're kind of hard to reach normally. After that, it's pretty much just trial and error, but as long as you use air tricks and rails, you can make it back to the other platforms and hop around to finish this challenge. Shibuya Terminal's open area makes it ideal for the Jet Flag Challenge, which really isn't much of a challenge at all, and the other two test runs are even easier. Clearing the test runs for Shibuya Terminal lets you play as the life form known only as Zero Beat. Home to record stores and mechanical dinosaurs alike, Chuo Street has all sorts of cool nooks and crannies, but leaves its mystery tape right out in the open, just underneath the mechanical dinosaur. Chuo Street's trickiest challenge involves the back alleys, rails, and billboards. You'll need to keep a consistent combo of grinding and wall riding, making sure to grind stall by pressing down on the left joystick, and slowing down before the sewer half-pipe. Score challenges in both the regular story and jet tech are easily done on the rails and power lines just past the 7600 building. Since since Chuo Street loops onto itself, you're doing a Jet Dash challenge here. As long as you're pretty much as fast as you were during the Poison Jam race, you'll be fine. Completing the test runs for Chuo Street unlocks everybody's favorite robot, Roboy. As one of my personal favorite levels, Rokaku Dai Heights really emphasizes just how high you'll have to climb to get everything done. The mystery tape really isn't that far in, it's in the brick building that Poison Jam smashes through during the story. Even though you may need to climb to finish graffiti and find souls, the challenges aren't actually that hard. The difficult challenge involves grinding the first chimney you see in the level. That's it. The top area of the level is great for score challenges, making it even easier to get the jet ranking. For jet tech, jet flag on this level is chaotic as hell, but once you give it a few tries, you'll get it down pat. Jet graffiti, same kind of thing. You're pretty much gonna have to climb the entire level since it's so spread out, but take your time, you'll get it down. Completing the test runs for Rokaku Dai Heights unlocks its namesake, Goji Rokaku. 99th Street is fun, vibrant, and colorful, but it can also be tricky to get around. The mystery tape is right at the bottom of the main Dragon Tower. The hardest challenge is the Gate Challenge. In the main area are these gates that represent different cardinal directions, but in kanji. You're going to want to start at the gate with a symbol for East and grind around the entire area, making sure not to fall. Once you're back at the East Gate, fall off the rail and the Graffiti Soul will spawn. This level can be tricky for finding Graffiti Soul, so I'll recommend doing this one in the post game. The test runs in 99th Street are a bit of a mixed bag. Jet Graffiti can be kind of annoying because everything's so spread out. Jet Tech is easy if you use the Dragon Tower and Y grinding. Jet Flag is also tough because like Jet Graffiti, the flag locations are so spread out. Repetition is really going to be the key here to getting these jet rankings. Completing the test runs for 99th Street unlocks Rapid 99. As Tokyo's underbelly, the sewage facility and bottom point are dark and dreary, both in appearance and completion. There's a reason the speedrunners try to skip the sewage facility during an any percent attempt. It's a winding maze that's difficult to navigate and just burns way too much of your time. For this next character unlock, you actually need to complete the challenges in both the sewage facility and the bottom point. The mystery tapes can be found right away, which is good, and the street challenges are basically just air trick combos and score goals. The graffiti souls aren't too hard to find either, although you may need to do some climbing, especially for this soul that's stuck in a tower. This is mostly just tedious because you're gonna have to do two jet graffiti and jet tech runs as well as jet flag for the sewage facility and jet dash for the bottom point. If you haven't guessed it yet, doing everything in the Tokyo underground unlocks Poison Jam. Nestled in the back streets of Tokyo, Hikage Street is small and compact, but still pretty cool to explore. The mystery tape is hidden in an alleyway near the left side of the level, and you'll probably hit a few dead ends before you find it. The street challenges aren't too bad. The difficult challenge involves grinding a crane in the rightmost area, 
then grinding all the way down the staircase and not falling. Some of the graffiti souls are placed in weird areas, so you'll need to use characters with good jumping stats and boost dashes to get them. The test runs here are probably some of the easier challenges you'll do in Jet Set Radio Future. Jet Graffiti is kind of annoying but doable. The other two challenges are a complete cakewalk. You'll be fine. Completing the test runs for Hikage Street will unlock the Love Shockers. Just past the sewage facility is Kibogauka Hill, a neighborhood loop with interesting architecture and a nice sunset. It's also one of the hardest levels to navigate not only for its size, but for its changes in elevation and structure. You'll need to get pretty creative to move around Kibogauka. Even the mystery tape is placed in this small little area towards the end of the loop just before the spawn point. Luckily, the challenges aren't too difficult. There's lots of rails and air to rack up a lot of points, and the difficult challenge involves going through a gate. That's it. The annoying part about finishing Kibo Gauka Hill is finding the damn graffiti souls because for some reason the devs decided to hide them in the smallest of crevices underneath weird buildings and trying to navigate it with the map system of Jet Set Radio Future sucks big time. Take your time with this one, I definitely needed some help myself. Jet Graffiti is kind of annoying but doable. Jet Tech on Kibo Gauka is pretty decent if you use the power lines and billboards near the start of the level. Finally, Jet Dash can be tricky, so feel free to use Boost Dash if you need to. Completing the test runs for Kibo Gauka Hill unlocks Pots, the friendly dog on wheels. Another level seen as an annoyance by many players, the Skyscraper District and Faro Park has a lot of places to explore. Just below Faro Park, you'll find a caged pit with the mystery tape. The challenge with this level will mostly be finding graffiti souls, although not as bad as Kibo Gauka Hill. The difficult challenge involves grinding around the Pharaoh statue and not falling. As for the test runs, Jet Graffiti is somewhat spread out and will involve a bit of jumping around. Jet Flag is the same deal, although I do find it a bit easier, but the easiest test run by far is Jet Tech. Just use the column rails in Pharaoh Park and you'll be fine. You'll summon the Immortals from their tombs after completing the test runs for the Skyscraper District and Pharaoh Park. As one of the furthest areas in the game, Highway Zero is a bit of a mystery, although the mystery tape isn't too hard to find in the street market. The challenges here can be tough. You'll need to do 70 tricks in one combo, which can be kind of annoying. What I did was use the rails on the winding street just before the market and then jump between them a bunch. You can also start a combo from here and then chain it with the rails in the street market so that you can get up to that 70 mark. Grind combo here may seem kind of tough, but if you remember to grind stall by holding down on the left joystick, you'll get it done. You'll also need to pull off a perfect wall ride combo for the last challenge. The test runs here are pretty tough, especially Jet Dash, so give yourself some time to practice. All this effort will be worth it because you'll get the noise tanks for completing the Highway Zero test runs. A physical embodiment of the ups and downs of Jet Set Radio Future, Sky Dinosaurian Square is filled with large structures all tied together with roller coaster rails. You'll be forced to use them to move across a level and it's gonna take some practice. The mystery tape is found underneath a building that's accessed by a green railway. Since there's lots of room to navigate here, the street challenges are pretty easy. The last challenge is kind of annoying, it seems simple enough though. You start on a rail, you jump onto the swinging platform, then land on another rail. The problem is that the swinging platform can be kind of tricky to get onto just because of the animation and sometimes the collision detection can be kind of off. I'd recommend starting on the green rail, going to the platform, then jumping on the red rail because of the way it twists around this area. It'll just make your life way easier. The test runs are actually pretty decent, although Jet Graffiti will take some practice for sure just because of how much rail transferring you're going to be doing. Completing the test runs for Sky Dinosaurian Square unlocks the true faker NT3000. As the last level on this list, the Fortified Residential Zone will test your fortitude. Not only do you need to climb the entire level to beat it initially, you'll also need to climb it multiple times to find Graffiti Souls. Once you beat it in the story though, the game adds a giant rail for you to grind all the way back up to the top to grab the mystery tape that's caged away. Conveniently, Grinding this giant rail is also one of the street challenges. The hardest challenge in the residential zone is definitely doing 100 tricks in one combo. The best way I've found to do this is by using the rails in the first area and just doing air tricks between them. If you're using Y grinding, that'll also be good for the score challenges. Luckily, once you do all the chaos of the actual level, the test runs are actually pretty easy. You can do jet tech with the same rails from the 100 trick challenge. Jet flag is contained completely within the first area, and by this point, you'll have climbed the fortified residential zone so many times 
that Jack Graffiti will not be an issue at all. With all that done, your final unlockable character is the final boss of the game, Akumu. And that's it, you've unlocked everything in Jet Set Radio Future. All the secret characters and collecting all those souls got you all the graffiti designs in the game. As for what you can do with the secret characters, it's mostly re-exploring the game, playing as them in local multiplayer, or using them in test runs. Many of the game's speedrunners like using the secret characters because their stats are better for certain test runs. As to whether there's anything else to unlock, you've pretty much found it all. Any other rumors of finding secret characters like Captain Hayashi, DJ Professor K, or Suga have pretty much been dispelled after exploring the game files and character data. Although I will say it's been 20 years since the game's come out and game modification has definitely advanced. Maybe somebody new will show up to challenge the status quo of Tokyo. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll link some more Jet Set Radio content for you to check out. And I'm planning to do more stuff exploring the Jet Set Radio universe, its fan base, and related projects. So feel free to subscribe. Anyway, I'm False Proof. I'll see you later. Bye.